Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Lunch Break Live, real talk about obesity, food addiction, recovery, and what's really eating you. I am Carrie Dela Cruz, here to talk to you guys today about a very interesting subject I'm calling normalcy. How can I just be normal? But before I get into that, I want to see who's here. Make sure you guys can all hear me. Oh, I see my mama. See those hearts are flying by? Hi, Mom. I'm so glad you're here. Um, and I also, I had a little bit of, uh, well, first of all, today promises to be a very interesting program and certainly not the be-all to end-all on this subject. As ever, these are just my opinions, my thoughts about matters, uh, such as being normal. And there is so much to talk about, far more than we can cover in a 20-minute program. So I'm just going to do my best to share with you the thoughts that came up as I prepared for the show. Uh, Melissa from Cornerstone Bariatric was the one who um, gave me the topic for today's show. You did it again, Melissa. You're killing me. Uh, not easy, but hey, I'm always up for a challenge. So before I get too far into the subject matter, I had something that I wanted to mention to you guys because I, I am picking up what I would interpret or what I would call a frustration from those of you who are watching the show, uh, joining me daily or regularly. I, I'm getting this fr frustration from you that's like, okay, great, great. So you're telling me what to do. You're telling me all these things that you do, but you're not telling me how to do it. You're not telling me how to do it. And I think, stop me if I'm wrong here, but first of all, I think what you're really saying is, how can I make myself do it? Not me, you. You're really saying, help me, help me. I need someone to make me start doing this and stop doing that. How, you know, I get questions like, well, how do I stop overeating? And I say, you stop overeating. And you're like, yeah, yeah, but I need someone to stop me from overeating. I need someone or something to stop me. And I hear this frustration. And here's a little secret for you guys. There is no secret. There's no magic. There's no softer, easier way. You just have to do it. I can give you the tools and I can give you the thought processes and I can talk to you about the things that get in the way of or, or, or um, complicate what is already a complicated process. I can talk to you about that. I can um, encourage you. I, I can reveal things that maybe you're struggling with that you thought you were the only one on the planet struggling with. I can tell you, no, no, you're not alone. We're struggling with these things. But I can't do it for you. I can't make it easier for you. Um, I can't stand there and smack your hand every time you reach out to eat something. I can't, you know, put duct tape over your mouth and say, don't eat that. I can't do that for you. I wish I could, but you know what? Nobody does it for me. So really, the long and the short of it is, how do I stop doing something you don't start? Because we know how hard it is to stop eating once we start eating too much of the wrong thing. See what I'm saying? So that was kind of the first thing um, I wanted to put out there and just say, nobody can stop you but you. And nobody can start you but you. But I can give you some tools that you can use to make this already challenging job of choosing recovery maybe a little more manageable. All right, so that's kind of my statement about that. Um, <clears throat> with that said, let's get into this the subject, um, and I think when you're dealing with the disease of obesity, when you're living a life in a body that doesn't look like everybody else's, it's really easy to lament that you just want to be normal. You just want to be normal. I know that was a common refrain you know, that I had, why can't I just be normal? Even when I didn't weigh 320 pounds, by the way. Even when I was a different shape than other girls, maybe in high school, maybe when I was a little heavier than other people, I just wanted to be normal. It was this word, this unattainable goal, this concept that was way out there, somewhere beyond me, outside of me. And then as I became less normal and heavier, it became farther and farther away, less achievable in my mind. And I chose weight loss surgery and I was like, great, I can't wait to just be normal. And then I realized that normal 
really wasn't about the number on the scale or how much I weighed. Not really. Not the way I was defining it in my head. So here's what I did, first of all. As I set out to tackle this, you know, get my arms around this subject, I talked to my coworker, who, by the way, doesn't uh, deal with obesity, has, to my knowledge, never had a fat day in her life. She is what you would define as skinny. I mean, she is a beanpole. She's like, she looks like a size zero or a size two, okay? But here's the thing about her. She works really hard at it. She works out, no kidding, six days a week. And sometimes she'll do a class at 5 a.m., go home, come back to the gym and do another class before she even comes to work. Works it really, really hard. But the point is, she has never uh, dealt with, she has never been affected by the disease of obesity. And so um, I started by asking her if normal was a word that she wrestled with. Did she ever look around in her life? Does she ever remember a time where she defined herself as not being normal? Was that ever a factor in her life? And she really thought about it and she said, no, I never... Normal was never a word that I used relative to how I was compared to anybody else. Uh, I might have said I was different than other people. You know, she has tattoos and sometimes she would buzz cut her head and shave it, you know, her hair really, really short. And she'd say, I never thought I wasn't normal because of that. I just thought, uh, I'm different than other people. She said, so really, I think that a lot of people who struggle with looking different than other people may look at normalcy as a physical definition, but she goes, it was never something that I considered. She goes, sometimes when I was very quiet, I would think about, I wonder if I think about things the same way other people think. So I wonder if I'm normal in here, not normal out here. But that was really the extent of it. So she said, no, it really never was a factor, never has been a factor in my life up to this point. Um, so I thought that was very interesting that she made that distinction between the physicality and the mentality. She says, nobody knows what's going on in here, but everybody can see what's going on out here. And how many people make decisions? She goes, look, I learned with a shaved head. Don't make decisions about if I see someone else with a shaved head, why is their hair so short? I don't know what they're dealing with. Maybe they chose to do it, she goes, like I did. Maybe they are fighting cancer. Maybe they lost their hair to chemotherapy. Maybe, maybe that woman over there shaved her head because she likes her hair short like that, like me, or because she shaved it in um, unity in support of a family member or a friend who's dealing with cancer. She goes, so we don't know someone else's story just by how they look. So how can we determine if they are normal or not? And I thought that was a very normal way of looking at it. Very, very interesting. Um, so if we were to put this word normal uh, into the category of physicality, and we may look at it and we may say, okay, if you are a smaller stature, stature, a smaller stature, read, shorter male, do you say, I just wish I was normal height? You know, I wish I was taller. If you're a very tall woman, do you say, I just wish I was a normal height, meaning not so tall? You know, if you were super, super thin, do you wish you just weighed a normal weight saying, so no one would look at me and tell me to eat a hamburger all the time? Do you see what I'm saying? You know, if you have curly hair, did you say, you know, do you say, I just wish I could have, quote, normal hair? See? So a lot of this may come down to our definition of normalcy based upon how we look relative to people around us. And obviously, where we live in the world matters because the definition of what normal looks different in different parts of the world and also in different cultures. I do know, and this is something that fascinated me, with uh, women of color uh, talk about the fact that when they lose weight, they might be judged by their peers as saying, what's wrong? You don't think you're good enough? Do you think you have to lose weight or something in order to be better? Aren't you just fine the way you are? So to them, in their community, um, a lot of the men like a larger woman. And so to them, they are not normal if they're smaller than the other women around them, you see? So there is this definition of normalcy that happens as a result of society, you know, culture, where we live, um, and how we look, and even our skin color. How dark are we? How light are we? How pale are we? Like me, my husband's always saying, you're so pale. Well, I'm a white girl. What do you want? But other people may say, oh, you're so dark. You know, what's normal? Who really is to say? So um, it sounds to me 
like it is opinion. It is opinion that we're talking about when we're saying, I just want to be normal in the opinion of everybody around me. Well, that's a really hard thing to do considering we all have different opinions, don't you think? And you know what? We're gonna have different opinion, opinions depending upon our age. Like my friend, my coworker was saying, you know what? What I thought was normal when I was 20, way different now that I'm you know, 37, way different. So my version of normal now does not look at all like it did when I was 20. And guess what? It didn't look the same when she was 10 either, right? And it's not gonna look the same. What, does a 70 year old look at someone with a bunch of tattoos and say, yeah, that's normal. To them, that might not be normal. It may be normal for that generation of people, but it's not normal for them. But maybe someone of that generation says, yeah, looks pretty normal to me. Do you see what I'm saying? So isn't normal a moving target? It's, it's subjective. It's an opinion. So we are all running around, what, chasing someone else's opinion that is constantly changing. We are running around chasing our own opinion, which is constantly changing. Do you think that's a little bit crazy making? I do. So I'm thinking... I want us to lose the word normal from our vocabulary and start, uh, let's peel back the layers and let's look at it a little differently on a couple of different levels, okay? You guys with me? Here's what I think. Number one, um, are we looking at the word normal instead of the word fit in, instead of the phrase fit in? Are we saying I wanna be normal or are we saying we wanna fit in? Maybe we want to fit in Literally, I want to fit into the booth at the restaurant. I want to fit into the seat on the airplane. I want to fit into the car. I want to fit into cute clothes. So there's that literal definition of fitting in physically. But do we also want to, quote, fit in where we are not looked at for being radically different because of our weight, right? We want to fit in, meaning we don't, we want to blend in. We want to blend in and what not be noticed or be noticed for what we want to be noticed for and not for something we don't want to be noticed for. So there's a lot to that, right? So how many of us are looking at the word normal as saying, I just don't want to stick out and I literally want to be able to fit in? Maybe so. What about if we put the word average in there and we say, I just want to be average. Well, average, by the way, is literally statistical. Average is that bell curve in the middle. It's numerical. It's based on data. So as we look around and we look at women and men of varying heights and shapes and cultures, right? We have different scales, different levels of average. Well, how many of us fall outside the average to the side of obesity that we don't like? So maybe we could look at this and say, I want to be average in my health, my weight, the things, my physical being. Maybe we're looking at it that way, right? And maybe that's more attainable. And that's not necessarily such a moving target. That's something that we can, you know, we have a big range that we can hit there, right? And sure, it's gonna change over years and years, but by and large, it's pretty much gonna stay a bell curve in the middle. So maybe first of all, if you pitch the word normal and say, I just wanna be normal, and insert the word average and say, of average health, right? Of average being, that would be good, right? I don't wanna be an outlier. I don't wanna fall outside that bell curve because it, you know, physically speaking. All right, um, so there's that. Um, let's see here. <laughs> we can also look at normal as many of us look at it as like a, a state of being or a condition, but really isn't it about acceptance, being acceptable? So when you look at the word normal, are you really saying, I just want to be accepted? I want to be acceptable. I want to be able to accept myself. That's a very different story. That stuff starts in here. 
We can't control what other people think. We can't. And you know what? Even if we look a certain way, there is no guarantee that we'll, we will ever be acceptable because we are who we are. And if you ask me, I would rather bring this idea of normalcy or acceptance inside here where my coworker talked about it. I want to know that I'm living in recovery in here. That's going to be reflected out here. That's going to be something that I can accept. And I'm not going to get so hung up on whether other people accept me as long as I am working hard to be the best version of myself I can be. So that's kind of what I was thinking about there in terms of how are we defining or uh, looking at or using the word normalcy in our lives. But of course, I can't leave you just hanging out there with no tools that you can use in your own recovery life. I can't leave you hanging out there. And so here's what I would suggest you start by doing. Start by separating fact from opinion in your own life, all right? So look at the things that you had been determining as not being normal and say, okay, are those opinion? Meaning, uh, my thighs aren't normal because they're what? Bigger than the person to your left or to your right? Guess what? That might be subjective, okay? And let's look at our weight. Is it in a healthy range? Okay, so that now becomes average. That becomes statistical and measurable. So start by looking at all of these things that you've been throwing into the I just want to be normal pot, pulling them out and saying, all right, what's opinion? What's factual? What can I influence? What can't I influence? What can I change, you know, about myself? Without surgery, I'm not talking about surgery here. I mean, you know, that may be an option for some things. Absolutely, I certainly chose it. But, you know, by and large, there's that phrase again, what can we accept without changing? Um, let's see here. Can you work on your fitness level and get more fit? Can you work on losing weight? You know, those are things that you've been judging um, um, objectively, but let's make it subjective. Let's make it be able to categorize it. Let's be able to measure it, all right? Um, let's see here. Can you change your height without shoes, I mean? Pretty much no. So that's one of those things that you just say, I'm going to accept that. Even if it falls outside the bell curve, even if I'm shorter than the average, even if I'm taller than the average, I'm going to work hard to accept that for what it is, right? Your body shape. You know, uh, are you a pear? Are you an apple? You know, are you athletic build? That's what you got to work with, all right? So instead of looking at it and saying, I'm just not a normal shape, I am the shape that I am, all right? And that is not opinion at that point. It just is what it is. Learn to accept it, all right? Take that out of that, I just want to be normal um, argument that you have with yourself, all right? So um, take the time to begin by honestly and courageously looking at the things that you have been putting out there as being reasons that you are not normal. See the things that you can accept because they are not opinion and look at the things that are opinion and determine what you're going to do about it and if they really, really matter. And let's start focusing on what's going on in here. Let's work on recovery because to me, I just want to be in recovery. I don't want to be normal. Because when it comes right down to it, there is nothing normal about me. I'm a goofball, right? I do things that not everybody does. I look different than most people. I'm me. I'm unique. And there is nothing normal about that because there's no one like me. And I'm okay with that. And I hope you guys are too. So that's it. That's all I got to say about that. And I'm going to take a look at your comments because I have a wee bit of time. Um, so let's see what's going on out there, shall we? All right, let me get up to the top here. I'm glad you made it live, Marcus. You are really keeping me on my toes, mister. You're keeping me busy um, working hard and thinking about my own recovery and thinking about the things that I'm sharing and how I'm saying things so that they can be workable for you guys. You are keeping me hopping. Hi, Mom. Hey, I'm so glad to see some people here that I haven't seen for a while. Let's see here. I'm going to scroll through. Yes, 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 says Marcus. I love it. You're my yes man. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, now you're my stop man, I guess. I love it. All righty. Um, 
I've always wanted to be a normal size person. Well, maybe an average size for your build and your age and your height. Maybe we work at that. You know, that is something that is subjective and not objective, right? Uh, let's see, I'm scrolling through. Yeah, I think normal is a subjective term, says Heather. Yeah, that's where I ended up with it after I gave it some thought. That's, I, I don't know if everyone feels the same way. Maybe I don't have a normal opinion of it. I don't know. All right, Dave, you made it. What did you miss? Just everything, but you can go back and rewatch it. That's the great news about the, re, the replay on demand. I want to fit in. Yes, Marcus, I understand that. We want to belong. We want to fit in. We want to be accepted and embraced. We want to be a part of the tribe. You know, the part of the group. We don't want to be alone. We weren't designed to be alone. We are designed. But how much of that isolation are we creating ourselves? How much of that not fitting in socially, right, are we doing to ourselves, not blending and not fitting out because we're holding ourselves out, because we're forcing ourselves in. Well, if I'm different, I'm going to be really different and, and you're not going to be able to accept me and you're, you can't touch this. How many of it are we doing to, how much of it are we doing to ourselves? There is some part, the physical nature of uh, morbid obesity, that makes it impossible for us to literally fit into the confines, the structure of our day-to-day -day existence and society. It is very exhausting to try to find things that fit us. I used to have to go shopping for big butt chairs, I called them, for our beach chairs when we'd go camping. I need a big butt chair so I can fit, and I'd have to pre-sit it in the store and say, nope, can't get my butt in that, can't get my butt out of that. All right, and that's very exhausting. That's very hard in life. I could not buy a normal size chair. That's what I used to say, but that was just an average size chair for an average size butt, which I didn't have. So see what I'm saying? I, I do understand. I understand, but if we change the vocabulary, if we change the way we talk to ourselves, then can we have a game plan? I think so. I think we gotta change the dialogue. And then we can come up with a, a solution and recovery. All righty. I'm on a roll. I'm always on a roll. I'm rolling my eyes. I'm, you know, rolling the dice. Yeah, I'm always on a roll. I want to be above average. Good luck with that one, Dave. Okay, I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm sassy. You know that about me. And if I didn't do that, you'd think something was wrong with me. Come on now. But yes, you know what? Here's what I think. None of us is better than any of the others, but we can be the best version of ourselves. Right? And I think, I know I, I got into trouble trying to be better than other people because in order to be better than someone, I had to push other people down or other people had to be less than me necessarily in order for me to be more than. And for me, that really messed with my head. I would just rather be who I am, the best version of me, and not worry about the person to the left or the person to the right. Got it? All right. Flossie, I'm so glad that you are here. Hi. Hi, it says flossy with all those exclamation points. Dave said the same thing. Yep, I am a goofball. A gorgeous goofball. Well, pff, all right, I'll take that to the bank and not get very far. I won't even get a Starbucks out of that, but thank you. I'll take it. All right. Um, I want to be in recovery. Yes, Mary Kay, yes. Be in recovery. Choose recovery. And the great thing is you can choose that today. Nothing, nothing has to happen about the way you look in order to choose recovery right now, today, in this moment. How amazing is that, right? We, you know, we could say, well, I choose to have different hair. You know what? You're going to have to go out and diet or do something. Not, I mean, not that I diet or anything like that. But you know what I'm saying? You're going to have That takes a different kind of effort. Recovery, you could choose it right this instant, right now, and say, I am officially choosing recovery right now, and I'm in it. Yay! That sounds like really fun. I love that idea. All right. Oh, uh, I really suit that color. You mean like this thing here? Is that what you're talking about? Or the black part with the silver buttons. I don't know. All right. Um, I love you too, Linda Lombardo. I love you too. Oh, you love me? Oh, well, then it's a mutual admiration society. Thank you so much. And thank you, Blanca. I am so gracias por venir y escucharme. Ay, muchísimas gracias, mi amiga buena. Okay, so thank you so much from Chihuahua. Mi, uh, mi cuñada es de Chihuahua. Ella es chihuahuensa. Okay, so um, I'm going to let you guys go now, and it looks green from here. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, I hope it's not green. 
You guys, thank you so much for the courage to show up and your willingness to be here. I'm, I'm really encouraged by uh, the hard work that you're putting in. And I want to remind you again, no one can do this for you, but I have every belief in you. I, I know that you can choose to do this. I know you can, and you don't need anybody to stop you from starting. You've got all that you need to stop from starting what you know you can't stop, and you've got everything to start what you keep stopping. Did you follow that? Start doing the healthy stuff, stop doing the unhealthy stuff. You've got all the tools to make both of those things happen. All right, then, I'm going to leave you on that note. Thank you guys for being here. I want to remind you all to have courage, seek peace, embrace joy, and above all, live your recovery. Don't worry about being normal. It's not all it's cracked up to be. Remember, you can't stop feeding what's eating you if you don't know what's eating you. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.